I was a drug addict. It just doesn't work. I spent the next 14 days in jail. He'd go into the kitchen and empty all my Cheerios all over the sink looking for rocks. It just doesn't work. You know what the definition of insanity is? I had not one dime. Everybody's gone. Everybody's gone. Everybody's gone. Nightmare. We didn't call it crack. We didn't call it cocaine. We called it poo. Because after the first hit, you're scared. I swore to myself that I'd never come back to this town. Got a hot hand. Place your bench, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up on the place where I first rented a, a uh, shop for, a, for a, a sign company. And uh, it was right down the street here. We're going to go buy it. We have a shooter and a good one coming out for a new point. This was a nightmare. <laughs> I left L.A. Uh, there were some people, some drug people that I overheard a conversation and they were going to kill me. It could have been paranoid delusions, but I don't think so. Took all the money I had, jumped in my car, barely escaped out of the driveway. And had nowhere to go. My business had closed down. My girlfriend broke up with me. I got rid of all my pets. You gotta move out now. Obligations and took what money I had and came to Las Vegas. This is about in 19, uh, it's about 95. Caution. System overload. And, uh, it was really kind of, kind of an adventure at the beginning, but then it turned into a horrible nightmare. When you're jonesing, that is the goal. We started doing sign work, but as always, it ended up cracks. Just kept, I, whatever jobs I sold, I went out. And first thing I do is cash the check and go buy some more dough. You know what the definition of insanity is? Doing the same thing over and over and over again. Doing the same thing over and over and over again. I remember the night that they blew the dunes up. I lived right here on the corner at the Polo Club Apartments. We're turning left here. It's Decatur and uh, Flamingo. And I had a pen. I was doing okay then. I was no longer sleeping under a tree. And I got an apartment. I was doing signs. And I uh, took a large hit. I mean, a huge hit. And just sat back. And just at that moment, the explosion went off. And I jumped out of my fucking skin. You didn't right think we were going to blow it up? No, right in here. Right in here. That's my place. Yep. They blew that motherfucker up, and I thought they were coming to get me. I was looking through the peephole, through the mini blinds. I was insane. I met a guy, and he let me sleep in his garage for a couple of weeks. He not only had cockroaches, there were rats in there. I was bringing in money, selling signs out of his garage, and I had to sleep with the fucking rats. How'd that make you feel? Like a fucking rat. When you're jonesing, that is the goal. I've seen some people do some really weird stuff while high on crack. I remember this one guy. Actually, I knew him from L.A., but I met him here in Vegas again. And uh, he'd come over to my house, and he'd take a boo. And after the first boo, he'd go into the kitchen and empty all my Cheerios all over the sink looking for rocks. I tried to explain to him that... Uh, General Mills isn't filling the cereal boxes with crack rocks. At one time, this was a really nice park. Grass everywhere. And I can see that they've saved the tree that I used to sleep under. I used to grab a piece of cardboard and curl up here for the night. I did it because it was centrally located. When you're in search of, and you got no money, and you got no chance of getting any money, you have to figure out a way. generate the cash to get what you need for the night. I met a guy here in Las Vegas that showed me how to do that. And we used to come into this market, go into the liquor department, and drop liquor down our pants. And that would generate our money. Then we'd have the dope we needed for the night. One time I did it, I went straight into the Albertsons, went straight to the checkout stand, grabbed a brown paper sack, walked to the liquor department, took $250 worth of liquor and walked out of the store. I spent the next 14 days in jail. Once we stole liquor from the supermarket, we brought it down here to these restaurants and sold it for half price. That's still the goal. And then there's those people that, uh, the peepholes. Remember the peephole people? They take one hit and their eye is glued to your front door looking out the peephole. 
and they'd be sitting for hours. And I'd sit back, and, and I used to take masking tape and cover up the other side of the peephole so when they looked out, they couldn't see anything. So, dude, what are you looking at? Just, they're out there. They're out there. When I was a drug addict, I could go to any city in the country and within 20 minutes be right where they sell the dope. You just have to follow where the hookers are. Hey, baby, want a date? Once you find the hookers, you've got the dope. This girl used to come over to my, my apartment and uh, we'd take some hits and as soon as she got high, first or second hit, she'd go straight, almost lunge toward the window and break the mini blinds apart trying to peer out of them. They're coming, they're coming. They're gonna get us. Shh. There. It was insane. We've made it. This is the Stratosphere Tower. If you're a crack smoker in Las Vegas, this is where you want to be. Because right behind it is the Naked City. It's where I used to buy my crack. I can't take you in there. Because... I tried, to, I tried to stop a lot of times, but it just, you know, it wasn't in my, it wasn't in my psyche to stop. I, I felt that I didn't have a problem. Oh, you know, you figure, oh, I'm only spending a hundred bucks a day, I'm only spending ten bucks a day, it doesn't matter, as long as you're putting something in a pipe and smoking it, you got a problem. We, uh, midway through a, a, uh, smoking session, and I'd break out the vacuum and start vacuuming the carpet, and uh, everyone would jump to the floor and uh, be streaming that I vacuumed up their rocks at one time. This guy totally dismantled my vacuum cleaner and searched through the vacuum bag looking for his alleged crack rocks. I can't blame anybody that, that was with me that discarded me because I was a fucking drug addict. All I cared about was getting the dope. One of my crack cronies he used to come over to my office all the time. We called him the shuffler. He'd take his first hit, he'd shuffle through my office, shuffle through my papers, shuffle through my drawers. Finally, I put up an anti-shuffle device. I welded a metal arm to my desk, so every time he walked up to it, he'd hit it, he'd turn around. He was like a human bumper car. While I was a drug addict, I really, I had lost all my apartments. I had no place to live. I was sleeping in people's closets. I had one closet. It was a master closet that was very big. I had a lot of clothes in it, but I made a little bed, and. And I was sleeping in the closet of some guy's house. But, uh, they continue to go back to get that dope. Mixing girls with crack just doesn't work. You spend all night trying to get sex. They smoke up all your dope. At the end of the evening, you're sitting there, your dick won't get hard, and they're gone. That's what happens. In retrospect, I guess it was all meant to be. I've been clean for a year now. I haven't smoked crack in a year. And uh, I had to get this out of my system. This is the first time I've come back to Las Vegas since I was an addict. It was a bit uh, harrowing, but uh, I think I'll live. If everybody could see themselves high on crack, I think the whole world would stop. 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 The whole world would stop.